Oh, you think a good guy would go and stab a bad guy with a gun? Well, not only do I believe it, you believe it. Because even when you make these arguments, well, you think a good guy with a gun is gonna stop him? Yeah, I do. That's just ridiculous. You should leave it to the cops. Exactly! All right, so I wanna talk about the, it's, it's been all over uh, the internet. So here's my question of the day before we start. What do you think about the concept of arming teachers, or at least allowing teachers to carry on campus? It's been a hot button issue yeah. uh, ever since President Trump suggested the possibility of it. Well, let's, let's roll a clip first. It would be teachers and uh, coaches, and this would only be obviously for people that are very adept at handling a gun. <laughs> and it would be, it's called concealed carry. Is that what where it would be a called? teacher would have a concealed gun <laughs> no on them, his, his, his they'd go for that. special training. It would be on their person. And they would their adept. Uh, be there, and you would no longer have a gun-free zone. Okay, so here, here's the thing. Obviously, uh, I, I don't. there's a difference between mandating, between right. forcing teachers to carry guns and allowing them to. Now, so this very concept, and I, I haven't understood it at all, so again, that's maybe have a blind spot. Tw tweet me. Comment below. <laughs> Because everyone in the media has been eager to dismiss this as a crazy, completely yeah. unworkable idea, yeah. as though we're all on board, which I'm not. Let's let's roll the clips. We expect so much out of our teachers. We expect yeah. them to be teachers, social workers, mm -hmm. Why is that? Um, psychologists, Discipline nurses, areas. doctors, disciplinarians. I, I don't think that we should expect them <laughs> to the also be law enforcement teacher. officers. Mm -hmm. um, and we also have so much research that shows kind of more guns in any setting um, lead to more gun violence in any setting, whether that's in a home what? or outside a home. When you hear the President of the United States say the argument. answer is to give every teacher in America a gun, Which he didn't say. that is no, he didn't insane. Say. That is an insane idea. I was a teacher. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Believe me, you don't want me to have a gun. I'm well, sure we don't want to. No <laughs> argument here. No. By the way, yeah. hit the notification bell if you're watching on YouTube because subscribing isn't enough. Just hit it up there in the top left, top right. Um, here's the thing. I don't want to force any teachers to carry guns. Absolutely. I don't want to make it a policy where teachers are carrying. You, you're, you sign up to become a teacher, you have to carry a gun. That's no. a terrible idea. Yeah. Okay? So if we're going to talk about this sensibly, let's find common ground, how about allowing teachers and faculty who are already CPL, CCW, LTC, depending on your state, their holders, to carry on campus just like anywhere else? How about that? Let's just allow them to carry on campus as they do at the mall, as they do yeah. at the supermarket. People who are already carrying. So we, we talk about the data. The data suggests that anywhere there's a gun, there's going to be more yeah. violence. No, okay, not no, exactly. Yeah, how about all the car? How about the parking lot? All the cars of those teachers who leave their firearm in the car. This, exactly. It's a parking yeah. lot of war zone. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Don't got it's like Detroit. So, <laughs> let's look at this. Ninety-eight percent of mass shootings occur in gun-free zones. Okay. That's a, fact. Mm. That's a fact. Another fact that concealed carry holders are the most law-abiding demographic you can find in the United States. As far as, according to my research, maybe there's another one, let me know. So CCW permit holders are actually convicted of felonies and misdemeanors at less than a sixth the rate of police officer. Oh gosh. <laughs> so even though police are convicted of crimes significantly less than the average citizen, a concealed carry holder is more law-abiding than an off-duty police officer. By the way, that's using the statistics that the Black Lives Matter activists would say, but those, those statistics are corrupt. Those cops never get caught in crimes. We're even using those, <laughs> and they're a sixth <laughs> less likely. Again, go through the, through the stats. We've talked about this, the CDC, right? Obama ordered the CDC to research gun violence, didn't like what they found. 500,000 to 3 million cases a year of a defensive firearm being used, potentially saving lives. Now, even if you just take a tenth of that number, okay? Take a tenth of it and say that's how many lives guns save per year. It is exponentially higher yeah. than the number of lives taken from firearms, certainly if you exclude suicides. We are not talking about any new kind of policy, okay? We are talking simply about allowing people who have already gone through the process to carry their firearm and have proven to be responsible and have proven to be more law-abiding citizens than any other demographic that we know, we are simply afford them that same right when yeah. they're in a position where they could protect their students or their school. Yeah. That's all yeah. we're no. saying. Just allow the same rule of law to apply on campus as anywhere else. Yeah, Joe. Yeah, I was going to say, we were talking about this before. If, if a teacher has a firearm and there's somebody out in the hallway shooting and they go out and fire one round, 
that person is no longer shooting innocent people anymore. He's determined to figure out who is shooting at him, and now he's trying to survive. Yeah. At least people have time to get away. Well, that's something else like, that's really important. You insane. hear this a lot, they go, oh, it's, it's, it's this fantasy of these survivalists that you're going to go out and stop them with your handgun. Absolutely. Now, here's why. Even if someone goes in with a rifle, and I'm the first to admit that a rifle is obviously would be my weapon of choice in a defensive scenario over a pistol. You have to be an idiot to not admit that. However, someone going into a school, okay? Their goal is to mow down as many people as humanly possible because they're evil bastards, yeah. as evil bastards do. They're not up against the wall with defensive scenarios. Okay, no. all right, who's coming my way? Because you do that, everyone's gone outside of the room. <clears throat> you have no one else to shoot. So in a scenario of a school shooting, this person has to be exposed because they have to move through the hallways to try and take as many lives as possible, where, of course, a teacher or a faculty member yeah. who knows the layout of the school could get a jump on them. Now, am I saying it get, you're going to have Rambo come out and stop the next school shooting? No, but it <laughs> certainly would give them the... It certainly would, would increase the odds. By the way, I'm just talking about increasing the odds to better than 98% of mass shootings occurring your way gun free zones yeah it's, that's the thing for me like i like the odds i right, like the yeah. odds they're stacked they're, they only improve when you put a gun yeah. in there and and he, i trust my fifth my, my son and daughter's fifth grade math teachers their chance of hitting something more than i trust the terrorist chances of missing when we talk about good guys with a gun stopping with a bad guy with a gun it's one of those things that it, it, it is so truthful that it is ironically disarming factually so the left yeah. just tries to say oh here comes the good guy with a gun myth again but it's not. So like, it's just some examples to put a face to. In Chicago, uh, a man opened fire in Logan Square. Uber driver with a gun shot him six times, ending the attack before anyone was injured. There was a Plymouth, Pennsylvania. We covered that. Gunman opened fire at a bar, killing one per person, one person, concealed carry, shot him several times, dropping him. Tennessee, gunman opened fire at a church. He was stopped by a church usher who held him at gunpoint until law enforcement arrived. Of course, there's Stephen Wilford, who we've had on this show. He used an AR-15 to stop the Sutherland Springs shooter from continuing his massacre after yeah. killing uh, 27 people. By the way, not to mention, people say, well, that's, that's, that's few and far between. Let's go with this. It's not really few and far between if you look at this, the statistics, but let's go with that. There's still no other way around the fact that even if it's not a good guy with a gun civilian, all of the other active shooters who were stopped by police with guns. There's no way around the good guy with gun stopping bad guy with guns, okay? Look, it's either a good guy with a gun who's a civilian or a cop. That's what it comes down to. Or, you know, I, I will give you this. If you are lucky, by some stroke of God, maybe they kill themselves, the active shooter. You get that, and that's why when we, when we list deaths, we don't list the active shooters when we right. try to. Uh, outside of that, either way, they're still, but they're still being stopped with a gun. So, yeah, this idea that, oh, you think a good guy would go and stab a bad guy with a gun? Well, not only do I believe it, you believe it. Because even when you make these arguments, well, you think a good guy with a gun is going to stop him? Yeah, I do. That's just ridiculous. You should leave it to the cops. Exactly! Hey, did you like this video? Of course you did. Unless there's something wrong with you. In which case, you can comment below. What's your problem with this video? We want to hear from you, and we promise you 100%, I give you, my word is my bond, will answer every single negative comment. Uh, for those who are normal, you can leave a thumbs up and subscribe.